persuasion. The ability to persuade and influence has never been in more demand. The days of simply telling people what to do and expecting them to do it are a long gone. Now you have to be able to sell your ideas. The key to effective persuasion is having powerful ideas and delivering them well. Ideas are the currency of communication. Information alone will never influence anyone to act. Only ideas have the power to persuade. The old word for this power is rhetoric. Since ancient times, the art of rhetoric has taught people how to assemble and deliver their ideas. Few people, at least in Europe, now study rhetoric systematically. Yet, by applying a few simple principles, you can radically improve the quality of your persuasion. Let's talk about character, logic, and passion. Aristotle, the grandfather of rhetoric, claimed that we can persuade in two ways. Through the evidence that we can bring to support our case, and through what we called artistic persuasion. Evidence is whatever we can display to support our case. We might use documents or witnesses. These days, we might use the results of a research or focus group. Artistic persuasion consists of three appeals using the skills of the persuader themselves. First, appealing to their reason. Second, appealing to the audience sense of your character or reputation. And third, appealing to their emotions. Aristotle's names for these appeals are ethos, logos, and pathos. So, let's start with logic, with logos. Logic is the work of rational thought. By using logos, we are appealing to our audience's ability to reason. We construct an argument, creating reasons to support the case that we are making and demonstrating that those reasons logically support the case. Logic comes into forms, deductive and inductive. Let's talk about character, ethos. Rhetoricians realized very early on that people were swayed as much by passions and prejudices as by reason. For example, we tend to believe people who we trust and respect. Ethos is the appeal to our audience through personality, reputation, or personal credibility. Why should your listener believe what you are telling them? What are your qualifications for saying all this? Where is your experience and expertise? How does your reputation stand with them? What value can you add to the argument from your own experience? Your character creates the trust upon which you can build your argument. And finally, passion, pathos. In the end, human beings are probably influenced to act more by their emotions than by anything else. Appealing to their feelings, pathos, is thus a vital element in any attempt to persuade. We tend to think of appealing to emotion as manipulative. Part of our suspicion arises from the fact that this appeal must always be indirect and underhand. We can lay out our argument or our credentials openly, but we cannot announce to the audience that we are about to appeal to their emotions. They will immediately be put on their guard. Neither we can inspire an emotion by talking about it. We must present something external that will arouse emotion. A charitable appeal, for example, might seek to arouse people to donate by showing pictures of children dying in hospital or animals in distress. Feeling the emotion or displaying it may be helpful, but a dispassionate presentation or description will often be more emotionally arising than an emotional one. Pathos thus has the reputation of being dishonest or unethical, and we know that speakers can inspire audiences to wildly irrational and dangerous behavior by playing on their emotions. But the abuse of pathos doesn't mean we should avoid it. Persuading without emotion is unlikely to be effective, partly because it will seem inhuman. The aim of pathos must be to arouse the emotional response that is appropriate to the case you are arguing. 
emotion need not be overwhelming. If we allow the subject matter or the occasion to elicit emotion in the audience, we shall probably exercise pathos as well. All three of these qualities, character, reasoning, and passion, must be present if you want to persuade someone. The process of working out how to persuade them consists of the five key elements. That is, identifying the core idea, arranging your ideas logically, developing an appropriate style in the language you use, remembering your ideas, and finally, delivering your ideas with words, visual clues, and nonverbal behavior.